but that's the fact. And in other words, the differences are the, are, are the things that, on the other hand, they have to be used the right way. If you try to destroy them, and you think the easy way out is trying to make everything the same, equal, you make the biggest, you cause the biggest destruction. So another, on the other hand, the differences can bring to, to, to argument and to this. So you have to know how to, by understanding what the differences are, by understanding that the mind has this function, the eyes have this function, the nose has this function, and and, and, and not losing the that that that, that, that the one trap one one you lose the lines of different of what what each function is, then you have a total control of what is occurring. And what if, you have one body at work. What if somebody said to you, uh, what what does it matter if the Jews disappeared or completely vanished and does the Torah discuss if that no, the happened? The Torah discusses. There's quite quite specific. I mean, if there no that it's impossible to, to have. Okay. That's what the Torah says. That's what it says. No, not the world will come to an end. It's impossible what? not because of destructive just because because it because the Torah accepts the fact that spirituality is reality. Yeah. And even as much as we think that it might not be in control of what's going on, when it comes to the bottom line it it always has the last say. So, so, so it will prevail. So it people, shall prevail. All people have spirituality. So what's the what's the big deal if all people just become uh, if Jews become assimilated? And are you saying there is writing that says it won't happen? So if it if it says that, who why won't it happen? And what's the big deal? Okay, we're getting into a lot of questions here. Everyone wants to hear. Why shouldn't they assimilate? Why should they shouldn't assimilate? Let them assimilate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for that. Let them, uh, <laughs> let them become... Why don't we go out and maybe that's the point. start <laughs> exactly the point. converting them? No, that's not. That's also not healthy. Right. The what do you mean? Could... Let who assimilate to where? Let the, the, the values that, uh, that exist. I thought that's not possible. I'm talking about values. I'm talking about Assimilation. Values. No, he's right. There's no question. that it, it, it was, That's great. What you said. Say it again. But I, I still am lost in <coughs> that last Kit Kat bar thing. <laughs> well, what do you mean, who assimilate into Instead what? Instead of the Jews compromising right. their spirituality and assimilating into the races. Well, let them. Let them assimilate into the higher level. Assimilate into the higher level, right. To a more spiritual higher level. Well, who says higher? Well, it's not higher, right? Not higher. Um, it's different. More right? aware of our inner. Uh, well, the spiritual world, one of the... Um, oh, why? The Chinese are aware of it, the... Uh, who's, who's, who's denying that? The Indians are aware of it, the Jews don't have a form of... The, the interesting thing is that this, uh, there is something very, um, very, very, um, uh, perhaps I'm wrong, I don't know, very intrinsically uh, Jewish, which is uni uh, a sense of universality, and uh, the universal import of the Jewish soul, the Jewish mind, that is useful not only to the Jews, it's useful to the world. And this is, I mean, look, look at history. Look at, through all the ages, what the import has been, even from people, uh, from people like Freud or people like uh, Karl Marx, who at some point or another stopped believing it. It's still, though, it's still, even though they themselves Historically and temporarily, and at that level, to stop believing, let's say, yeah. some Jewish uh, I, way, they still import into the world, into the universe, very important Jewish value, very universal. To me, that's it's all about it, but uh, uni universal, this is why no, I think the I idea of. No, I have to know what you're saying. You, but what you're saying, saying no, I know exactly what you're saying. Because the Torah looks at things. Let me just say. I'm saying to you, let's just so we. What's the big deal? I'm asking. That's what I'm going to answer. All no. Jews, you know. Just I'm, I'm going to answer okay, that. Enough of it. Let's just. That's what I asked before. That's what. That's what, that, if that. That would be the most rational. I said, if you go from the pure, that would be the best, best, the best idea, the best solution. The best solution. The answer to that is. That's what I'm trying to say. That the best solution when you look at things on the outside, but the Torah perspective, which is as follows, a painting, right? Painting, just an analogy, is made up of many colors and many different variety. And if you, if you, different colors, different lines, different uh, shades, if you start mixing them together, what you lose is the whole beauty of the painting. Is that correct? But in a painting, it's just a little. It's not. It's, who cares? So there's no painting. 
when you talk about the spiritual, the spiritual universe, the spiritual side of the universe is also set up the same way. It's like the human body. There are the arms and there are the legs. If you, if you mix them all together, what you end up with destruction of the body. If you try to make the arms and the legs or you, everything doing the different equal functions. One second. One second. Now, the same is true the Torah perspective of what the spiritual skeleton of, 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 of humans are. The same exactly that there are different limbs that and, and one cannot if one if you try to make one the other it destroys. Now the only problem with dealing with that is that we don't see that. And someone will say, Well I don't believe that. So then then that's true. But if you do believe that, and this is what the Torah teaches, or not it's not really necessary belief, you eventually understand this. It's an it's an impossibility. It's and even more. In the body the worst thing that happens is so you kill you you kill yourself or you kill someone else. In the spiritual side, you're not only killing you are, you are doing the you are doing op- opposite of the whole existence. The whole fabric of existence is made up of these divisions, and these divisions are healthy and and good. Okay, so on the, the contrary, on the contrary, but, the question, but spirit and physically, I understand about it. So spiritually, though, what's the answer in terms of why is it important that the Jews not do it? Well, I'll tell you the truth. You want to be real realistic about it. Mm-hmm. I don't think if I answer that question to someone who asked that, it will be it will be sufficient for the person not to do it. Anyone that has such a question mm-hmm. c- cannot be answered in five minutes, and, and, they, and, that, and that will make that will change their whole attitude to the question. Right. If they have that question, is it true? You need a, you need a little time with them and a lot of time for them to understand a lot of things bef- that they should finally understand. I'm talking about someone that's sincerely asking that question. I remember once we. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember once we talked about there was a certain number of souls that were started off on the journey. And then uh, <coughs> those souls are, in, are, embodied in cert, are, are embodied in a certain number of Jews that are alive today. And, and it's very important that Preserved because supposedly those souls are very closely connected to, uh, are closer to that force than 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 other uh, peoples or or even most Jews. I've heard that those souls are sort of around today more than say a thousand years ago. It's more the time is. Now a lot of the souls that were around, so what do you want to say? Okay. around in the time of Moses, is that like... There are more now, that's what you're trying to say? There, those souls that were around in those times are now, many of them on earth today, it's sort of that time... Do you remember we talked about Yes. Do you want to like elaborate on that? <coughs> I, I, I just, I want to know how that's significant to what we're saying. Well, well, I'm just sort of now, you know, rather than playing devil's advocate about saying why or the why is it important that you Why don't you answer together. the question? I just did. I now, uh, I just said that it's important because of, you know, it, it's, it's easy to say the answer, you know, for me, or especially being in the company of, you know, of Jews, you know, so we will go, yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah, beautiful, you know, that makes a lot of sense. But it's sort of a, you know, you could almost say that it's egotistical, or you could almost say that it's, uh, uh, you know, that if there were a group of Indians sitting around, that they would, you know... Have Is that your reason, like a pride heritage? No, no, no. Oh, but I, as I understood it, and, I, and, and, I, and this is where Simon would have to elaborate, that there were a certain, uh, certain amount of souls that were allotted that... That and, and there's a couple of people inside of the Jewish community that are very close to to uh, a certain perfection, much closer than than other. And because their because of their closeness and their perfection, it keeps a certain balance going. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, is yeah. that exactly why? I to say. One second, I just want to say one thing. First of all, considering what you brought about you know, the, Chi- about so the Chinese, to say that, Chinese you know, and the no. Indian. Well, no, no. I, I think <clears throat> I don't know. I, I perceive maybe a little different than the way you're describing right. it. The Chinese and Indian. But I'm. 
What I'm saying has absolutely nothing to do with superiority or inferiority. Right. Nothing to do with mm -hmm. it at all. On the right. contrary, I, on the contrary, on the contrary. I agree with you, but I don't. A Jew has responsibility, just like a non-Jew, to find himself or herself, mm -hmm. what their real self is, which is the spiritual self, and that should, and bring it down and manifest itself in the physical life. That is a that is a, that is a very generally speaking, the goal of all human beings, men, men or women. Uh, Jews and non-Jews. Anyone that can do that and has information how to do it has also a, an additional responsibility to influence another person. Mm -hmm. They come, people they come in contact the same direction. Right. Not to force them. Simply influence meaning telling them, passing on the information. Right. Now, they, they don't have to, once they know the information, the truth is, no one has to tell them that they have to pass it on. It's automatic. Like I've mentioned many times, it's like natural. Right. Because it's like so. It's not. It's not like you're telling someone. Listen, this this, this is the secret. Right. It's it comes out naturally. First of all, you're a living example of it, and right. secondly, it it just expresses itself. This is Jewish and non-Jewish alike. When you get down to breaking down, how do you do it? So there might break down that a man does it one way, a female another way. One man one way, one other man a different way, another female a different way, a third female fourth, whatever. A Jew this way, a non-Jew this way, an Indian one way. Each one can reach the ultimate and total spiritual perfection. There's no one that is not let, not let in and cannot go into the doors and the chambers of spirituality. It's impossible. Because if spirituality is real, it's real for everyone. It's not real in the Jewish race or in the, in the temple, in the shul, in the synagogue, and not in the street. Because we're talking about a reality that is real. What difference is it where, where there are just right. certain places and certain times and certain situations where it's easier to become aware of it. Right. Yom Kippur, for example, holiest day in the Jewish calendar. That day, there are more. The layers are shed. Some of the layers are shed, <clears throat> so as more doors are open, so you're, it's easier for you to reach in and, and or become connected. It's just like in our own times, like those moments of truth I discussed before. They they just pop up in our lives. But in Judaism, there are moments in the year when you know how to be in control of yourself. You know how to. Like, there's a Pesach coming up. There's a Shavuot. There's holidays. There's a Shabbos. Each day has its own significant way of reaching to different levels of the spirituality. And actually, every mundane physical day of work, even today, tonight, tomorrow, so has its way true. of... Now, this is, this is true. So that, that, in, that, in that sense, there are differences. Just like there's a difference between how to, Sunday experiencing the spiritual levels and doors that are open on Sunday, and Monday it's different. The same is between people. There's the way the Jew and the way the non-Jew. It's two different ways of doing it, but this is, you're getting to the same... It's, a, it, you, it's the same prog progress, and it's a response, ultimate responsibility of each individual to influence another. Jews, non-Jews, and non-Jews, Jews. To destroy the difference of one and another is not just, you think you're coming closer. Really, you, you, you're breaking yourself farther apart because you're destroying the, the fabric of what you're made up of. Right. I'm, I'm saying is that you are born Jew, you're born non-Jew. You have ways and there are directions exactly what each one can, how they have to do it. And the whole beauty of it, on the contrary, why did God have to create, why, why was there a creation of four billion people? There should have been one person who <coughs> fulfills the goal and the function of what the universe was created for. I'm asking the question the contrary. If, if, if the goal is only, that, 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 that there's only one way of living, there's only one way of religion, this is the Jewish belief of it, if only one religion was true or one way of spiritual development was true, then, then, according to Jews, believe God would have created only one person, and that person should live that way. On the contrary, He created billions of people, and there are billions of people on the on the. Each one thinks differently. There are million, thousands of religions, and different spiritual beliefs. There are Indians and Chinese. Each one has found in many ways their moments of truth, their truth in their way. And it is true in reality for them because, on the contrary, the beauty is the variety, and how so many people from different directions. <laughs> eventually come and lead into one certain form of uni unity. So each so it's in a sense a contradiction, but it's but it's the beauty of it. You have differences, but those differences lead into one. And the more and, 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 and the more to become even more unified, the more different you have to be. In other words, if the eyes in the body perform their function in the in the, the, the more they perform their function differently from the airs, the more beauty and the perfection of you have of the body. If the eyes start becoming, they, they can't see that well, and the ears can't hear that well, and, they're not, and they're, in a sense they're becoming closer to each other, what, they, what you're doing is, it, it, that is weakness, that is, that is destruction, not good. 
So in other words, the functions of the diff- the functions of each different part of the machine has to completely perform its function totally to the extent that it, even though it's completely different from another, and the more it, it, does, it, it performs its function, the more different it's, it appears from the other. But the, but in, but in the re- in the real truth, in the spiritual sense, it, it becomes closer to it because they're both doing their ultimate. So they're both reaching the point that gives them energy, which is the same point. Am I is that cl- is that, is that yeah. clear? Okay. So. So it's like, so when you talk from the Jewish belief, so the Jewish belief in a sense is so, on the contrary, someone will ask, well, Judaism, we've talked about this, Judaism is, what, what does it say about Christianity or Muslims, or about other religions, about Hindus, about Buddhists, <coughs> or any other form of religion. So Judaism says, on the contrary, Judaism is in universal in the sense, you talk about universal, Judaism is universal in the sense that it says, each one is, is, has a function for the people that live it that way not like it says that everyone has to be Jewish. On the contrary, if someone wants to convert to Judaism, they are not, they, you try to dissuade them. You, there's no, there's no, you don't, you don't, you, don't, you, you do all your utmost of not allowing anyone to convert. For the same reason. For that reason. For that reason, because they have their own way of doing things. Why should they change, why should they, 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 they mix, mix and, and change the wires? The wires are working a certain way. And, and there's no, there's no, there's nothing wrong with it. A non-Jew can reach highest levels of perfection in that, in that sense. So, what you have is a, a spiritual sorry. body at work, and, and the spiritual body at work, anyone that is aware of that will never be able to, can, and, 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 let's put it this way, anyone that feels and understands that will never be able to ask the question why they don't become one. Inside of the Jewish and, uh, philosophy. And more, well, just one more point. Oh, yeah. And more than that, and the, kind of, the more you become aware of this, the more you realize that the question, why don't we become one, is one that comes only from your own ego, and from the fact that it's uncomfortable to walk into a room when everybody is, let's say, doing something which we all agree is not necessarily the best thing to do, but you're different. You don't want to, and that stems from the same, from the same, from that same urge of being accepted, even if it's accepted, just like it would have been if you were, if you were, in, if you walked into the, into a concentration camp where Nazi generals, whatever, <coughs> were, were uh, persecuting, let's say, someone. So you become part of it because that's accepted, even that Inside. there's that tendency we have, and that's where the question I think uh, to be very strong about it comes from the same point. That is why the only w- reason that why, why should we why should we become the same? If someone asked me, I'd ask them, why should we? What what I mean, what is the what the what is the point? I forget what, what's the uh, in the Reals. spiritual. Mm. Sure. You have a lot to think about. I see. Yeah, just something I'm trying to get to. Inside. What's that? One Okay. What's that? Go ahead. What are you saying? Spiritual body. What? What's the? Uh, sorry. I'm still on California time. Yeah. How was your? Uh, what well? You were you were in California. No, no, no. I just mm-hmm. want to ask you: Could you, before Gabriel goes, I want you to elaborate on on this story that I once heard here a long time ago about what I was trying to about inside of the Jewish belief about the soul. There are a certain number of souls that are designated to to achieve a certain perfection to to get to get very close to a certain source can you that are more aware and more sensitive to a certain source yeah. you don't, you don't know. I don't know what you, so what was the point I'm trying to in, inside of the Jewish belief I wanted to hear what, what that story was I mentioned the story about it yeah you recall the story? Yeah, it was a story. It had to do with numbers. It had to do with the numbers of souls that were designated for a certain thing. Well, concerning the Jewish race, the I don't know break that the that guy, Alpha or something. Not no, about the word MS? Truth? No, no. Well, anyway, let's okay, so now I'll describe what you're saying. Okay, maybe. I'll let you know what happened. Thank you. So um you're very sorry to um 
No, it's like a very shy thing. I feel awful to have to keep it. It's because he's no, so young. young now. I'm so young now. <laughs> 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 <All right. laughs> but he's weak. He cut off his hair. Now I can have my wedding. All right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So what is the story? So there is some, I'm not I don't know. What I, mean. <laughs> I, just told I don't know what story exactly you're referring to. I can't recall. I think maybe I do know what you're talking about. Right. It must have been a long time ago. Uh, well, I want to say something. Tell me if I'm on the right track. If not, we'll go to something else. Um, when you talk more specifically concerning the Jewish race, the painting or the, the body of the Jewish race, the spiritual body of the Jewish race, is consists of 600,000 parts. Okay? which in the turn, in other words, 600 different functions, and all together each one has their own and another cannot to replace, and all together they make up one body, spiritual body, and what the Jewish function erases. <coughs> and that is 600,000, which since there are 600,000 different functions, that, that in turn affects that there should be 600,000 different souls. But, of course, that is, if all those 600,000 came down, they came down at a certain time, that was the time when the Jews had gone out of Egypt. That, that point in history, there were exactly 600,000 Jews at that time. Because they were able, they had that ability. What happened was, they were not able to complete, for, the, for their reasons, just like we have our problems, they had theirs, not complete the picture. So what happens is, and they died, so what do you do? So there's what's called in reincarnation in Jewish belief that the souls return to continue the mission, to complete... Seven, seven, three, oh, oh, two, oh. What number is that? It's the phone number of the 600,000 oh. souls. Yeah. <laughs> soul line. Soul line. So just go on, please. Soul yes. So, so the, those... People are coming... So what happens is that... Back. In other words, reincarnation is not... In Jewish belief, it's, it's only the no- normal, natural process of the soul continuing what it was supposed to do originally. And when it finishes, it does not have to reincarnate anymore. That's why it's important to, um, to, uh, to find yourself. Right. You may be one of That's those. right. Because you may be one of those. We are all one of those. <laughs> Today, we are all one of those. Right. There are very few that are not. That's what we'll get at, right? How, how does that work? Surely, just not. What happens is the 600,000. So what happens is each, each one of those 600,000 split up again. They split, because since it was difficult for one to complete the whole thing, and as the generations descend, it's more difficult, the job gets more difficult. So, so one soul can split up into two parts, and each one has half of that function to com- accomplish. The function here is not just turning in a screw or knocking in a, uh, banging in a nail, but it's a whole, a whole life with many details and many, de- uh, many, de- many different specifics, which the Torah describes specifically. Now, none of us can ever know exactly what our mission is, but we know generally, because you know, first of all, finding yourself, that's a general point, and you know generally of the spirit overwhelming the physical, not, the, not in the opposite direction. Those are general points of what our function is. But then there are specifics that we each can find out through, as we grow, we realize from our experiences, when the, thing, the work we do, we begin seeing where we can, where we can contribute. But this really needs, you need to study to know. The more you study, the, the more you know of how you fit into it. Um, so as they split up, and they continued, so, uh, so slowly the, the picture, the, the, the course of the puzzle begins to be put together as the generations progress. And slowly the one soul finally reaches its, 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 com- its culmination and did its job after maybe splitting up into thousands and going through maybe hundreds of years of lives. And then the next soul, next soul. It's not as simple as I'm saying. I'm just general, generalizing it. So the 600,000 split again up into 600,000. And they keep splitting. So for all we know, we could all be one, one, all really one part of one mother soul. But not necessarily. No one can really know. Do we all have to complete the mission at the same time in order to... No, no, we are... We all know. We all, I mean, we all, all have our independent lives. Complete. We don't have to complete it. We see that there are people that live through a life, they don't complete it at all. So there's no having to do. Eventually, it will have to become complete. The question that's really up to us is how quick is going to happen. This is like a, this is like for real. I mean, or is this, in, I mean, in your mind, or this is a story that is 
a way in which we can understand the idea. A metaphor, I think it's a metaphor. I mean, which is, is this like for real 600,000 mm. souls and boom, that's it? Or is this like a way to understand in story? I think story? if you came here a few more times, you'd understand the answer to that. It's hard to answer that. I'll wait. It's both. It's if both. that's an invitation, I'll uh, come uh, back. Oh, no question. You're definitely invited to come back. Feel free to come in whenever you like. Um, I'll answer that maybe if you'll understand what I answer, maybe that maybe. The answer to that is the difficulty you have with dealing with, or with the questions that are coming from. That the, the six hundred, you know, it's much more comfortable, much easier to deal with that as a metaphor. Right, like Adam and Eve. Too, right, I mean. that, that feeling of comfort, you know, comfort, it's much easier that way. So you come here maybe a few more times and you'll, you'll study more about it. You'll, you'll realize that accepting the fact that there's 600,000 is just as comfortable. So, so it's really the answer to the question that it's both. The metaphor is true and also the actuality is true. And they're both on the same level. They become not one becomes, uh, I don't know if, I just said it. Maybe. No, I understand, but it is, at a certain point, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter if you understand the idea that it's been effective. The qu right, the question is whether how you relate to it. That's really the bottom line that I always mention here, is how you relate to it. The Judaism teaches that there's no such thing as someone telling you that this is the way it is and you accept it. It's, it come, you, you can hear information and be inspired and listen to that and study, but eventually you take it and make it fit it to your form of life and you decide exactly how and what. So it makes no difference what I say anyway. You know what I'm saying? But it happens to be both. Both are correct. And, and, and for our own defense, protect, uh, for our own protection, our own defense, we're always able to say, well, maybe it's not so literal and specific, so it's more metaphorical, that makes it easier. So that's necessary to, to, go, to get through, so fine, that's also fine. Whatever reality What's important expresses is that the point you is most it, important is that you're honest, you're, you're honest with yourself and to the information, right. and that you don't let anything... Right. Nice. <coughs> talked about this a few weeks ago actually which, which it's hard to really get to the top you have to always constantly remember that when you talk about 600,000 souls I'm using physical terms for it but it doesn't work that way where, where, where are these souls where, where, where is this all in the sky somewhere it's spiritual energy spiritual energy exists right here you understand mm -hmm. so when you can realize that to be a reality and as real as you're here you and even more real then it, there's no problem with the whole picture because it's you know what I'm saying? It doesn't become it's diluted it's by splitting up. Though, does because it? I know I'm saying the most difficult part to accept anything Soul that's spiritual thing. is because you think of it in physical terms. 600,000 souls. So where are they? Well, which closet are they hidden? You know, like that. Like where? But you have to realize always that abstracted and realize that it's not. It's not at all that way. It's not. It's completely. You can never. Really, if you use the instruments, physical, our five senses, we can never even prove that there's a soul or a spiritual energy. But it makes no difference because that can be more real than we are. And absolutely, there was once a story with a, uh, another Rebbe that two big philosophers came into him, came into him and said to him, well, you Jews believe that there are angels and their spiritual powers. You know, we don't see it. We don't. Can you prove it to us? Can you show us where? So he says to explain to us how. Where are they? Whatever. So he answers them. He answers them with an example. He says, "You both are philosophers. You came here probably by chariot, by you know, or a wagon, a uh, carriage, with horses. There was a probably a carriage, uh, a coachman." was 
running the horses, and you were sitting inside, both discussing some philosophy. The carriage, the the coachman, was was whipping the horses, and trying to get as fast as he can to the place you want to come to, in order to, to get his money, the salary. That's what he's thinking about. 